I am an animator. When I was studying animation, we had this exercise where we had to guide each other, walk outside, blindfolded. Now I would like to invite you to close your eyes and take on this journey with me. So you start off from the classroom. When you hear the echo, go, 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 it's replaced by the traffic. You know you're on the street. You might hear some cars swooshing by or some people walking closer and further. You might hear some birds singing. Maybe you're walking past by a tree and you hear some water sound. I actually don't know how to do this, but you know you're by the canal. You can pretty much tell where you are based on what you hear. And it was pretty fun up until you reach a place and it was very quiet. You get confused for a second, but soon you realize it is an art museum, just like here. Now you can open your eyes. Welcome back. Happy to see you again. But I wasn't happy when I was in the museum because I know that everyone else can see the paintings on the wall, the sculptures on the floor, everyone except me. That place wasn't made for me. There was an accessibility issue with that museum, but it also got me to think about my own art. As a visual artist and animator, I didn't realize that my art could be so inaccessible just as long as I can't see. It sounds very obvious, but it didn't occur to me that I will be so frustrated when I am in that position. What would I do if I go visually impaired or blind? I can make sculptures or music, but the only thing that I can't make is animation or film. They're just moving images on a flat screen. I can't even rewatch my own clips. Well, there are video descriptions for visually impaired audience and I've been volunteering it for so long that I know how hard it is to probably describe them and let alone that. As an ex-animator, would I be really satisfied with descriptions? So I started to think, why not use touch to deliver stories and effects so that I can keep working even if I can't see? That's how I created my first tactile cinema piece called Neuja Conquers the Dragon King. It's adopted from a 1979 Chinese animation film, which itself was adopted from a Chinese folklore about a superpower boy named Neuja battling with the evil Dragon King who doesn't rain for the farmers and eat children. <laughs> Sounds terrible. <laughs> the person in the center is the audience, blindfolded, wearing headphones that is playing the audio that you'll hear from the video. The two of us on the side are the cinema that is giving the experience. I would like to show you a short clip so that you get a sense of what tactile cinema is like. Once upon a time, there was a general called Jing. His wife got pregnant. It took her six years before she gave birth. <sighs> My baby is a ball? It must be a monster. I shall kill this monster. It turns out to be a little boy. You are not a normal person. You are a seed for an immortal. I'm Taiyi the immortal and I will take you as my student. Seems like we're torturing people <laughs> with trash, and that's why people love watching it. <laughs> In my definition, tactile cinema is a storytelling format that delivers cinematic experience through gestures, materials, and touch. 
but how do I know it's working? So I collected some survey after each participant, and according to their responses, people are really getting it. They are surprised that intense process of pregnancy is represented by the blowing balloon, and it grows in the fight between the two hands, being the battle between the bat Naja and the Dragon King, and their bodies become the mountain and the sea, and emerged when they are approached as Naja to take up the responsibility of protecting the people. All that is to prove that touch can deliver cinematic experience. But apart from that, people are also surprised that the rich experience was brought by such simple props. A storm might be just a big paper rubbing against your back <laughs> with water spray and hair dryer. And a dragon is made of plastic gloves. <laughs> to achieve all those effects, you don't need IMAX or VFX. You just close your eyes and have the tactile feelings that brings you all the imaginations. It's like a 4D cinema without the first 3D. <laughs> but even better, because it is accessible. I presented this in Beijing Fenaki Animation Festival, and during the festival, I invited one of my friend who was blind to come and experience this. He was happy because it was fun. I was happy because I know that animation festival is not really a place that is made for him, but this time, I finally have something that he can experience without losing any more details than other people. But I have to say, tactile cinema and tactile art is not just for visually impaired audience. Touch is the universal language that can reach people with any abilities. It is accessible and more importantly, inclusive. And that's the kind of art that we're looking for. But it doesn't mean that everyone is in favor of being touched. Every time we perform, there will be a bunch of people on the side watching us. And it was very fun to watch, but they think it's enough to just watch to get the experience. Or maybe they just don't want to pay. <laughs> I understand that. And in response, I tell them this story. During the festival, the booth owner that is right next to me have witnessed over 100 performances over those days. Sorry about that. <laughs> but on the last day, they decided to come and experience it themselves. They said, even after watching so many times, it was still so different to experience it with their own bodies. Feeling is always different from seeing. And that's why I believe that touch is not just a trans tactile art is not just a translation from visual arts into touch. It is an independent genre that may hold even more part potential than the overexploited visual art. Compared to the massive amount of visual artworks, tactile art remained barely explored. Almost all the possible visual styles have been explored by previous artists, yet what is the last time you've seen touch in a museum? Probably the sign of don't touch. <laughs> but that's also why it doesn't have the same solidified aesthetics as visual art does. Think about that. We have comfortable and unpleasant touch, but we don't have beautiful nor ugly touch. In Nerja Conquers the Dragon King, we, also always, we always have the dragon to go around the participant's neck to mimic the feeling of a snake crawling on you and naturally makes you feel scared of the Dragon King. It is very effective, yet it is not that pleasant. And it's neither beautiful nor ugly. Tactile art always creates this field of sensation for you to engage with. It is fluid and non-judgmental. And those qualities themselves contain so much possibilities for us to explore. Not only tactile art is very different from visual art, Tactile artists also work in a different way than visual artists. As an animator, my job is to sit in a dark studio all day, try to finish something and send it over to festivals or platforms. At most, I do some Q&As, but I really don't have to. I don't have to engage with people in order to be an animator. But to be a tactile artist, I have to literally touch people. I have to form a temporary intimate relationship with people and collaborate with them to complete the experience. And during that, you've got a lot to do. 
Some people can't raise their arms very well. You need to adjust to that. And people react to things differently. Then you do trigger warnings beforehand and change your act based on their act. This is a process of negotiating the boundaries and communicating with each other. And when you reach a touch that resonates with you and them, you feel like your bodies are connected in a new way. And that's the fantastic thing of being a tactile artist. Not only during the presentation, in the creation process, we also have to collaborate. You have to test out your effects constantly and do rehearsals with people, or you might need a helper like I just did. That's why we initiated a tactile art collective called Tactile Eye, in which we do rehearsals, workshops, translations, seminars, and so on. In this process, we talk to each other, argue with each other, help with each other, and take one another into account. This is the biggest change that tactile art has given to me. It teaches me how to enjoy people's presence and gives me the courage to trust and work with people. Today, the pandemic has forced us to be separated from each other for so long. And even now, it hasn't completely gone away. Some of my classes are still doing hybrid, and touch has become a dangerous act. It is in this moment that we should cherish the value of touch even more. Touch is such a hidden treasure that brings us so much imaginations and possibilities. And more importantly, it connects us face to face, hand with hand. I would like to end my speech with a little exercise that you can do here to create your own tactile cinema sketch. We'll add one prop to Nerja Conquers the Dragon King in one of the fight scenes. And before that, I would like to invite you to close your eyes and move your body a little bit, maybe rub your hands, warm it up, and touch different parts of your clothes, different things that you have, feel their differences, different textures and shapes. For example, I feel like my clothes is kind of roughy, but my dress is kind of smooth and silky. And when you're ready, find an object that you have with you and play with it, touch it in different ways, let it touch your different parts of the body. For example, I would choose this badge that I have. It's hard on its edges and it has some rough textures. It has a pointy back. Pay attention to the patterns that stood out to you. And imagine that you are in a scene where Noja is fighting the Dragon King with his army. What could this object be? Is it a tool? Is it a character? Or is it a mood or emotion? For example, I feel like this pointy needle scratching on my arms and hands is like the tension, intensity, the nervousness that Noja is experiencing when he is in the battle. When you're happy with it, you can open your eyes, and that's your first tactile cinema sketch. Well, it's not perfect, but you can practice it and revise it with your friends, and you're ready to create your own tactile cinema piece today. Thank you.